Yeah. Are we talking here? What are we doing? Oh, wait, are we? Okay, you didn't give us the signal. Are we live? Are we live? We're live. We're doing it live. Yo, Firepoint. Well, it's time for Fridays with Andrew. Hunker down. Is that the way Gung Ho talks? I, I do forget. not remember. Because he looks like he talks. <laughs> this is the match, the matchup that we didn't know we needed or deserved. Oh, Check man. us out. Check us out. Batman. And Hobbiton. He's in Hobbiton here. Look, he's got his cape on. We're playing with toys today. Yeah. Hobbiton and Batman. He, he's not, well, hold on. He's we're not playing with toys. Well. Some Bilbo, are you home? Some of which are just new arrivals. Swear me, Bilbo. The ring is mine. <laughs> uh, some of these are new arrivals. He doesn't want the ring to fall into evil Some hands. Some of these are thematically appropriate. For new arrivals. This, the, all this legacy Star Wars stuff is new arrivals. We just uh, and Batman. Lordy, lordy. And Hob Batman. And Hob Batman. Hobbits and Hob, uh, Hob. Hobbits is yeah. So, it's Fridays with Andrew. Fridays with Andrew. It's and, Andrew. Yeah, we. Uh, I really didn't know what to talk about today because unlike when we did the Joker, there wasn't really like a a big news story this week that I thought like warranted discussion. Yeah, right. you get it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let him. No, I, I. I mean, I. I. I mean. Well, I am concentrating. So there's I'm no big news story, situation. really. Yeah. So we we were just doing our usual thing, talking about toys and and movies and franchises we like, and um, we were talking about the Bumblebee movie, and and then in that discussion, I'm like, oh my god, this is the Friday's Adventure discussion. So uh, people who don't know, there's that new Bumblebee movie coming out, the sixth live action Transformer movie from uh, I think it's Paramount Pictures. Uh, and a lot of people are more intrigued in this movie because it looks like there's a little bit more, I don't want to say heart, but like it, an, an emotional tug. I don't know, but it, it, first of all, it, I, and I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting, yeah, and yeah. generation one image, like the, the, the two things I'm seeing that are interesting people, there seems to be more of an emotional through line as opposed to action explosions and, and, and sometimes boobs, but like, uh, Bumby seems like it, it's a little bit more substantive, substantive. And then there's also, uh, especially in the Cybertronian scenes, much more clear indicators of gen of Generation One designs. Which everyone, and some people might not remember when the first Bay movies came out, people were crying that these weren't G one looking Transformers. It was a thing. That Bumby had stripes and Optimus had flames. Well, not uh, just that, but well, no, just well, the I, the look yeah. in general. Well, all right, I. I uh, Lifelong Transformer fan coming over here. As a kid, I dug them. As I got older... Okay, people from my generation all right. or people who were clamoring no, no. for the Transformers I'm just movie. The, the Michael Bay designs are kind of bad designs. Yeah. Like, that, that's kind of... Like, I, I, there are people who aesthetically dig, dig them. Uh, and, you know, more power to them. But... These are the ones with the balls and stuff. Yeah. No, well, <laughs> they're all the kibble and all that garbage. Well, it's, no, it's, it's all kibble. They're ball kibble, and, and they're, That's like... That's just his horrible... Do you know what, though? No, my, my favorite... His, uh, his, his really bad... Uh, garbage. My, comedy. My it's, bad it's like bad comedy. comedy. Well, no, Good we, quote, Penelope. No, do you guys I say up for that. The line, the line, the follow-up line to that scene, though, is uh, Totoro. John Who P is this guy, anyway? No, no, no. Is it, wait, is that... Is, you're doing Totoro, right? No. Or is Starscream? Or, We're doing the Transformers movie. But he didn't... No one... Oh, wait, you're doing Frenzy. This is no, bad comedy, that's yeah. Not, that friends he goes, what did he say his name? Oh, that's right, yeah. I'm yeah. a hardcore Transformer fan, just I need the exact quotes, otherwise <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. And then he goes, Galvatron. Oh, oh hell, Galvatron. Galvatron. Yeah, if you why, did the, why did the, the Constructicons have horns? Why do they have horns? I don't know. So anyway, they're very musical. They're, about... like the, they're like the Jets. They come in snapping. <laughs> anyway. When uh, you're a Transformer, <laughs> when, you're, when you're a Decepticon, you're a Decepticon for life. Well, you're anyway, you're so I, I, have two, I have two Michael Bay things. So Jonathan Totoro goes, I'm, I'm directly under enemy scrotum. That's the, the very nice Revenge oh, of the Fallen line. God. Uh, and, and then um, the best description I've ever heard from Michael Bay Decepticons. More Decept I mean, you can say Transformers in general, but especially Decepticons. It's like you got a super magnet and you chucked it in the middle of a dump. And then whatever came out was a Transformer. Yeah. So they're making Just, a new Transformers movie. Yes. And and it seems like they're... they're, and, they're and, and they're they've introduced G1 designs. G1 design, G1 inspired designs. Yeah. You know, because if you have... Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So G1... More so G1 iconography uh, looks like a little bit more thought was put into it from a story perspective. So a lot of We're people, assuming that. Well, yeah, we're assuming a lot. I, well, no, I'm, I'm saying what the fans are getting right. from the film... I, no, like, uh, so I'm, I'm going to do a shout-out to Evangelist Chris Howe, a big Transformer authority. 
he was saying if you even look at the cinematography of a lot of the scenes in the trailer, you can tell they're they're made to invoke emotions from the audience as opposed to just here are Transformers set pieces, here's an action scene. It looks like that there's some genuine stuff going on in the Bumblebee movie from a filmmaking perspective, and that's what and that has who directed this? I for, oh my god, it's killing it. he not Michael Bay, not Michael Bay, but it's produced by Michael Bay. The Earth to Echo guy, I think. Okay, anyway, but not okay, Michael Bay. Not Michael Bay. So, um, so we're talking about. He said he he really wants to do like an ET Iron Giant type movie. Okay, great. Yeah. This so this is a reboot. Yeah, he's got to. He has the chops for that. He is all about tugging at the heartstrings. Yeah. And I'm being super sarcastic. Travis, Travis Knight. Travis Knight. So I can see him doing an Iron Giant type movie where the whole movie is like the end of the Iron Giant. Yeah. Where he's just fighting and blowing things up. Well, it's also because they've gone with... You are a gun. He also directed Kubo and the Two Strings. Yes. Okay, yeah, that's another... Yeah, so, so like... That's kind of a departure, like, from the very... You are a gun. <laughs> well, no, Kubo and the Two Strings is... Um, Not about robots. Right? Oh, no, but write yeah. it in, guys. But no, it's... it's no, it's, it's related. It, it, it's... It's genre fiction, uh, coming of age story, and that seems to be what what Bumblebee's trying to do. Okay. Anyway, uh, in addition to all of this, we have this movie is following the two big Hasbro writer room meetings, which were Hasbro getting a bunch of different writers for two different sessions to pitch various movies. Uh, the Transformers writer room kind of sounded like a bit of a flop, but what was interesting was the general Hasbro writer room. Because they did two of these. They did one for Transformers, and they did one for just all of their properties that they wanted. All right. G.I. Joe, ROM. And right. Mike so keep in mind with movies now. Sorry I look like this. I've been painting upstairs, and I'm totally doing Hard at work. A, Man at work. The Goomba look. Um, I'm reading about the Every movie movie-verse now wants what Marvel has. Cinematic Universe is the yes. name of the game. So keep that in mind. And, and by the way, there have been way more Cinematic Universes announced than movies that have come out. There's a Warner Brothers cinematic universe in development. Right. There's a Nickelodeon cinematic All universe right. in development. So anyway, the writer's Everyone rooms... wants big money. Yeah. Um, so they're in the writer's rooms. They, they, they were hashing out how to put these universes together. Yeah, and, and, and so there was... A, because obviously we're not included in like the conversations, like the fans... There's been like a lot of speculation. Oh, are they doing a Transformer cinematic universe and a Hasbro cinematic universe? Why are there two different writers' rooms? Is Transformers even going to continue after Bumblebee? There's all these questions, all this stuff. So it's very, very speculative. They things. don't know that until they see the Bumblebee numbers. Exactly, exactly. And we don't know that until we see Bumblebee. Right. Um, but there is one credit that has led to a lot of speculation, myself included, and that is John Cena... You can't see me. Uh, he's in the trailer. Well, yeah, he's in the trailer. I, I didn't see him. him. He's in one of the trailers. I, I couldn't him. see him. Oh, oh my god! It took me a minute. It took it took me a minute, like a John Cena match. Anyway, um, I yeah, I don't know if that was good or not. I, I don't know. have no idea what that means. Anyway, uh, I, it was me trying to do wrestling humor, but I'm bad at it. Okay. Um, I thought it was funny. He is credited. He's he he said he's a member of Sector Seven, which is. The secret organization that was in the previous tra Michael Bay Transformers movies, but he's credited as Agent Burns. 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 A very unusual name. Montgomery. Yes. This is a connecting to the Simpson movies. How is uh, Burns an unusual name? Yeah. I, how many to pull out of their butts? Yeah. I guess he's like. It's not like Agent Smith or some name. Yeah. Like John Doe. You know, it's like. Uh, oh, I don't know. Burns isn't that. You know. Mister Lazarus, whatever. But anyway, it, there but, is conjecture. But there has been conjecture because there is also a character from the Mask continuity from Mobile Armored Strike Command named Calhoun Burns. Mask, who Hasbro also owns. Mask, who Hasbro also owns, and Mask, who is part of what we all assumed was the prototype. Of this movie cinematic universe, which has been the IDW, the IDW comic shared universe, which I have, am an open supporter of. Okay. Yes. And now so I'm the good stuff. This is how this conversation happened. This is how this conversation. We were talking about the Transformers movie, and mm -hmm. Andrew started telling me about the IDW comic universe what? that all of these Hasbro properties are properties in. are in. And well, it's because the one thing that's getting my wheels turning, because a lot of people are speculating that John Cena is a Matt, is Calhoun Burns. I have, this is my own little conspiracy Charlie Day from Always Sunny Theory, which is the character who looks just like Starscream in this movie, who Travis Knight is insisting is Blitzwing. So if you watch the trailers, there's a character that when he's in his alt mode. 
And his face, even his head yep. looks very star screamy. Although all of the seekers have the same shapes. Okay, sure, but Blitzwing is a the, seeker. He's he, all the Jets are seekers, aren't they? No, no, no. Blitzwing, a triple changer is a separate sub faction. Oh, that's right. Blitzwing is in the seeker. You're right. Blitzwing yeah. is, a, is triple changer. That's right. You're now, right. Okay, I'm sorry. So some people could, now. Here's the thing: the three main villains of the Bumblebee movie. So anyway, Blitzwing is colored like Starscream. He's colored like Starscream. He's the, he doesn't have stuff that invokes Blitzwing. He has stuff that invokes Starscream. Correct. Gotcha. Uh, which is very. Conf- which has been confusing to a lot of the Transformer fan base. Right. It's inspired memes. Typically, obviously. Starscream is gray, red, blue, yes. and some white, I guess. Yes. And Typically, turns- Blitzwing is purple and tan. And with some yellow. Right. Uh, it, it's been, it's, and it's really weird, especially because so much of this movie is like, you know, we're going to have a you know, G1 fest. Everybody loves G1. I'm still stuck on. I I, I wiki the the director, this Travis Knight. Did he guy, do Earth Echo? And I no. Oh, okay. He's he's only done. He's only this is only the second movie he's ever directed. Okay. He's only and I, maybe I'm wrong. I never met the guy. It seems like he's only famous. His dad owns Nike. All right. Anyway, uh, it's, back I'm on sorry, topic. I'm on, I'm on a tangent. The guy seems like a dick. Oh, <laughs> so back on topic. Well, you make a good movie? That's all. Uh, well, Ryan Johnson's not. So back on topic. Well, you had to get that in there. As a rapper. He, oh he, gosh! He, he did an album in his dad's basement because his dad made him a recording <laughs> studio. Then his dad bought a human animation studio so he could run it. So Wait. he's now the head of an animation studio that his dad bought so he could have it. Leica? Yes. He's the head of Leica. His dad bought. It was originally called um, Will Vent Studios. He bought it and gave it to his kid. Oh wow! Yeah. So now he's. Wait, head Leica? Of oh my god! I feel like a bad animation fan. I didn't know Leica was. Well, okay, hold on. That's sorry. That's fine. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, so anyway, anyway. What, what you're seeing, the director said, what you're seeing and thinking is Starscream in the trailer. Which any sensible Transformer fan would think is Starscream, is Blitzwing. There's a lot of speculation about why, so again. The director is insisting it's Blitzwing. Is it insisting it's Blitzwing. So some people are like, well maybe they want to save Starscream for a different movie, or the continuity doesn't make sense for Starscream to be on Earth. Or maybe, you know, like, all the other two, all of them are triple changes. Okay, so maybe, but. But, my thing, okay. this is Andrew Conspiracy time. Blitzwing has a very important role when the different Hasbro properties are coalescing in the IDW comics of being the captured semi-live corpse that the U.S. government G, uh, sponsored G.I. Joe experiments with to create the mask technology. Because in the IDW comics, mask is a subset of G.I. Joe. Which makes a huge sense. Makes huge, and it makes huge sense because it makes sense for the mass vehicles to behave the way they do. They don't turn into robots. They turn into other vehicles because of the way triple changers work. Because there are two vehicles because and a robot. Because there are two vehicles and a robot. So my my you know my head has been swimming you know since I I came up with this theory. I don't know if it's true. You know maybe he's just named Agent Burns. So you're saying that the director may have seen. Or read the, the IDW verse, or in the, in the meetings they said, "Hey, listen, this is how the IDW verse works." I'm curious. He may have been Starscream earlier in production, and at some point they decided, you know what, this could be the entry point to our cinematic universe. Wet dreams. Maybe we call him Blitzwing. So if they're taking you, a page from IDW, potentially this movie is the start of the Hasbro cinematic universe. I'm in, I guess. Hopefully this guy can make a decent movie and he's not just like a, you know. Was Kubo good? Everyone I know raves about Kubo. Kubo. Um, th- th- there's... That yeah. was animated though, right? Yeah, it's an animated yeah. film. Yeah. Every, every, well, I mean, for the most part, so is this one going to be. It's not... A, <laughs> in, in terms of the Leica canon, it's my understanding Paranorman and Coraline are considered better. Um, but... I've heard good things. I still need to see Kubo. I need to see Kubo and Bok Trolls. Anyway, that's it. the animation Fridays with Andrew. This is the Hasbro Fridays with Andrew. So, the thing is, uh, the IDW Hasbro universe, I, I don't know if, like, I don't know. There's still stuff about Hasbro's relationship with IDW that we're confused about. I still am of, I don't know. I have, but imagine, I, imagine, imagine a world where this Transformers movie is good, first of all. Yes. In a world. And where it introduces... Because that's a big thing. It, the cinematic universes are, it's, it's a great thing to do. I think it's fun. They need to be solid individual pieces. That's where I think a lot of cinematic universes like the DC and the Dark Universe are tripping over themselves. Because they're just concerned with making cinematic universes instead of what Marvel was concerned with, making Iron Man good. And I think that's the, the 100% first step. Iron Man needs to be good, and then you think about, okay, well, where's Thor's going to come in? Well, uh, the, the, a misstep, I think, was not having 
when that first Transformers movie came out, it was an okay movie. It wasn't yeah. terrible. I, yeah. I loved it. And I, I was like, man, I wish they would introduce G.I. Joe through this. And I always thought that um, Tyrese and the other guys were going to end up being G.I. Joe. They never did. Yeah. But that would have made such good sense. Well, cinematic universes were also, you know, I mean, I don't want to say, because there have been, like, spinoffs and, like, movies that are connected and blah, 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 blah. But, like, cinematic universes, we understand them, weren't, you know, a thing in 2007. No. The, the ground wasn't ready, um, unfortunately. Uh, but, yeah, I, and, and then, obviously, we got the G.I. Joe movie that we got. Two of the G.I. Joe movies that we got. Well, okay, I, okay. Penelope dressed up in her Baroness outfit for that movie. I've we heard were so psyched like, to go, and we left with, like, paper bags on our heads. We hey. put our popcorn bags on our heads. All right, hold on. I'm asking you as a G.I. Joe. All right, so, so I've never seen the second one to this day. Yeah. The second one was better than the better. first one. That's why I, I'm curious. Because the first thing they do is kill Channing Tatum. I've heard it's a good, it's, what, is, is it a good movie, though? No. Okay, so it's just better than Rise of the Yes. Thunder. Okay. So, it was, you know, it's like. Getting dysentery and just getting food. There was more to like about it. I like The Rock. I love The Cobra And The Rock design. as a G.I. Joe guy, yeah. is, it works. Is he Roadblock or is he The Rock? He's Roadblock. Oh, uh, he's he's The Rock. He's, he's not like... No. Like, as a long-term Joe fan, you wouldn't recognize Absolutely not. as Roadblock no. if someone didn't tell that No way. You? Okay. Not even a little bit. Okay, but is, does that work or is that... I'm, I'm, I'm now okay. Go on. It works. Okay. It works in a cinematic universe. Ro- regular Roadblock wouldn't work in a cinematic universe. It's it, he a rhyming cook. Yeah, dude. No, <laughs> no. He's too. Scully's like, no, if we want to get dinner tonight, should we invite? Them? Yes. So. Hi, Scully's. Or hi, Scully's. Hi, Scully's. I know why I was looking at her phone. Um, because <laughs> they're on there. They're okay. inside it. Yeah. So I have. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so now here's the thing. The Hasbro IDW universe was very mixed for people. A lot of people didn't like having. A lot of people didn't. Whoops! Like- we paused the broadcast. We oh. are back. Okay, cool. What, did I miss? A lot of people didn't like spaghetti in their tuna fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? So, about the IDW books, like why they didn't like people like I. Joe people that. didn't care about having Transformers in their their IDW books. Yeah. Why is there peanut butter in my chocolate? Exactly. See, I'm fine with it. I, I actually, it. but it's for me. It's the big three. For me, it's. Okay, G.I. Joe and Transformers totally work. They did the crossover in the 80s. I loved it. And there's always little shout-outs in the cartoons yeah. and stuff. It, they work well together. Marissa Fairborn is considered one of the biggest... That's Flint's daughter, I believe. Fl- Flint and, and Lady Jane's Lady daughter, Jay's daughter yep. who in the the far-fledged future of 2005 <laughs> is the Earth ambassador... It is the year 1995 or whatever. Yeah. What, 2005. Yeah, no, no. Two, it, well, okay, season three is 2006. The yeah, so the movie, movie is, is 2005. 2005. It is the year 2005. 2005. Everyone will be wearing identical weird spins <laughs> and have hoverboards. We really wanted the hoverboards in the 80s. <laughs> I remember hoverboards. So, <laughs> and I like. I think Mask works great with G.I. Joe. Yes. But to me, those three. Don't start throwing in ROM and Micronauts well, immediately. Well, no, okay, let's be or smart. Or Visionaries. Don't get too crazy out yeah. of the gate. Let you me know, me it took... How many movies did it take to get Guardians yeah. into the... They can be in the same universe, well, but let's not shoehorn them in so fast. Okay, so here... All right, so here's Or my, introduce such a crazy thing. Here's my Although, pitch. Here's Alien my Robots... Here's my pitch. Here's my pitch. Pitch it out. Pitch, pitch it. So, before G.I. Joe and Transformers were... In the IDW universe... G.I. Joe's, they tried to make G.I. Joe's into the main thing. Like, they were the Avengers of the IDW-verse. Were those Joe's. Uh, some people said it should have been Transformers. Some people said the Hazard Universe shouldn't have an Avengers. But I, I do see the logic in having a focal point for your universe. Because, it, you know, like, I think the Avengers certainly benefits the MCU. Because even if you're not watching all the movies, you can look at Avengers and get a general idea of the landscape that's happening. All right, well, the focal point makes sense. It would be Transformers. Well, and I'll tell you why. Well, no. Be- I'll tell you why. Okay. Because although G.I. Joe is the better property... Whatever. <laughs> uh, Transformers... You've said so many cruel things to me since I've known you, Transformers... <laughs> um, What's one more? Transformers is more global. G.I. <laughs> Joe is very America. Here's why... Even though they've tried to make it uh, a global... Joe, Neither a of them. Hero. Neither of them should be the focal point. Because I know who should be the Hasbro focal point. You're out of your mind. No. Hear me out. Power Rangers is a bigger toy line than G.I. Joe and Transformers. Hey, buddy, I like your gold shoulder pads. No, are you... He's wearing just a vest in the... Hey, I'm a Marine! No, but here's... This is why you... Now you can have G.I. Joe be S.H.I.E.L.D. 
Now G.I. Joe doesn't have to have the burden of being the main guys. Were they the, supposed to be S.H.I.E.L.D.? Guys? They were, but n not, yeah. in the I and not in the IDW verse. Yeah. And that's why I, it didn't... G.I. Joe kind of didn't work for a lot of people. So you're saying to bring these guys into the Hasbro, or since Hasbro just bought these, yes. bringing and them Hasbro into... Hasbro has said we have... You just want to shoehorn no, all your favorite no, no, things no. into... No. Give me Micronauts. Give me the gold no, Green but, Ranger. I give do, me Transformers. This, Can I finish? No. This is the end of season. This is the end of phase one. This is Avengers. You know, you have Iron Man. You have Captain America. You have Thor. You end it with Avengers. That's phase one. So the culmination of introducing all these things is them meeting up with these stupid well, teenagers from Angel no. Beach Cove. Angel, <laughs> Angel, no, but here, Power Rangers. Correct makes, me, Andrew. Power Rangers makes so much sense as a through line because it has because Transformers. I think you can tell a lot of like, for lack of a better term, human stories with Transformers. A lot of audience people are alienated if you spend too much time on the Transformers. I just like that, but that's just a fact. Power Rangers has. That incredible genre fic, that incredible fantasy element, and the human element. They're, it's a, it's What's more coming of age than people in high school? It's basically Spider-Man. It's basically karate Spider-Man. That's Power Rangers. It, it's, it, wow. It, wow. Wow. Hold on. Back up. I just You just made me have an epiphany. Okay. Power Rangers is just karate Spider-Man. Yeah. He's so right. It is. It's teenagers in stupid outfits doing dumb shit. It's just Spider-Man. With karate and, and a little bit more space. And rubber suits. Oh, his suit's made of God knows what. <laughs> it's Spanish. Lycra. <laughs> You're a cosplayer. I yes. Know. He wears a dance belt. I appreciate it. Yes. I I am just saying. I. The, the, it, ju what did I say at the beginning? Jumping into a cinematic universe is bad for business. Going in slowly is obviously <laughs> the, the way to go. That's what she said. Nice. Raising. Transformers. Ma if through Transformers we get mask, through mask maybe or you know what it's you know it's like how Thor and Captain America First Avenger are happening side by side. GI Joe and Transformers are happening side by side, and then we get mask. He looks so good on there. He does look good on there. That, that was like and perfectly. Just... They're they're coming in like that. Okay. You know, all I hope is that now, somehow Bill Bill this. That happens. This this happens, and it's all in scale. Swear to Gondor. I want to see the Insecticons fight GI Joe. I think that's why I brought uh, Shrapnel out. I think the Insecticons fighting GI Joe would be pretty dope. Um, I just don't see the Angel Grove kids fitting in. No, it's well, no. Oh, well, maybe like, it's because it's not from my childhood. Yeah, it's, well, I'm not saying it because it's from my childhood. I'm saying it from a business standpoint. I'm saying it from a thematic. No, you're not because you fucking love the Power Rangers. No, I love Transformers more. Why? If I'm doing it just. Of what I like the most. Why isn't Transformers my number one thing? Well, they're already there. No, but I... I now I, you want to shoehorn, like... No, I'm saying what makes sense thematically and what makes sense from a business standpoint. This is like your last meal if you're oh in prison. God. No, it's... I, I want ice cream also, and tater tots and tuna fish. I did not tuna fish. to being an insane cinematic universe person. I still want gem in this as well. I want <laughs> I want raw micronauts and everything. I you're just going too far. I pitched you my gem sandwich. You're just story. going too far. I pitched you my gem sandwich. You're just sandwich. going too far. I'm not saying it on air because I'm saving it for me. Wow. Just going too far. It. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about it later. Um, you just don't like power. No, you're doing. You're the opposite, Justin. You don't like Power Rangers, so you don't want it in your spaghetti. That's what it is. I definitely do not want Power Rangers in my spaghetti. Well, no. But here's the other thing. You don't need to have like every minute of the GI Joe movie interrupted yeah. by. Oh, Power Rangers exist. Yeah. You know, like they you, don't even have to really touch each other. Yeah. They can be their own but I ain't touching that. But they're happening at the same green. time. No, are you are you kidding me? Are you seriously saying they won't want to experiment? You know, what was that monster subline in G.I. Joe? Yeah, what, Cobra La? No, no, no. It's like there's like a blue mantis guy. No. Oh, uh, the, mo the, the later guys, the space marines and stuff. That's How terrible. How much you want bet? They, terrible, no, terrible, ex terrible. They experiment terrible, on a Rita Repulsa terrible, monster and terrible, they get those. Terrible. Bill Bat. Are you guys ready for Bill Bat? You're just. This is going to be the ultimate Gary Stew at some point. Ryan, it's. It, it, yes. You, see, my cousin Ryan is your age. Yeah. So, well, he might be a little older now, actually. Yeah. He's a Power Ranger kid. He was there from day one. Is he saying my idea sounds awesome? He's, well, he said G.I. Joe wins out over Power Rangers. No, but I'm saying as a thematic through line. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. And like, I but but I don't I don't see 
a universe Hasbro universe sur- with Power Rangers as its tentpole. I I disagree. I dude in the well, no, it's not interesting enough. Well, no, who's gonna come to that? A, a, a lot of people went to the. It, it, it still was a bomb by modern movie standards. Yeah, but the 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 I'm the reason this is this right here is is because it's the most popular. Sure, but I but I. Okay, well, fine. We need to be realistic, not live in our, our fantasy. No, What's our? Is, no, what is the last on, meal we hold want? On, no, no, no. From a merchandise standpoint, Power Rangers makes more money than Transformers. That's true. I'm not making that up. They are internationally speaking, they are a bigger brand. I call bullshit. No, all right, I'll get you. The number. I call I'll bullshit. Hundred percent. I call bullshit. No way. I'm, I'm telling you. Are you saying year to year, over time? What are we saying here? Because I say. All, across the board, Transformers does better than Power Rangers. All right, well, uh, t- t- I, I don't. Know how to Google this, I don't know how to Google it either, but I, I've seen it. I've seen it. You know what I've seen? I've seen Legacy Transformers on clearance at Toys R Us, and Mas- I mean Legacy Power Rangers on clearance at Toys R Us, and Masterpiece Transformers selling out on day one, first. Day. I'm saying you're, you're only giving me movie numbers. And here's, I, I, Are they counting movies? Sure, they're, they're Transformers. No, and there's saying, movie Transformers. Well, no, well, fly Transformers out is going to be by, well, no, by movies. It. By movies. I'm talking about plates, bicycles. Oh, God. No, I'm, I, he said toys. Now he's talking about no, I plates. Said brand. I said brand. I said now he's brand. talking about said night lights. I said brand. I said brand. Well, it's, I gotta call Still, bullshit. Transformers I gotta, Ball hey, kills it. I got to call bullshit because there have been five Transformers movies. And they've made four hundred two million dollars, three hundred and twenty million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the toys they've sold. Two hundred fifty million. Dollars. There's no way the brand has made more money than Transformers. I don't know what you're basing that on. I'm, I'm and you said, you said, you said, you, you're not. This isn't. This isn't. No, I'm taste. You said you know that. No, he said he knows I, it. No, I. Didn't, I want I, to know how you know it. Maybe it was one year, but I. <laughs> Uh, it was that five, one year. No, just Power Rangers has a, We just got a five star review from someone named Evan. Listen, thank I'm, you, Evan. Thank you, Evan. Evan's not watching this. Okay. I'm listen. I'm sure Power Rangers makes plenty of money. Hasbro wouldn't no, have I'm, bought it. I, I, dude, I'm. No. I, all right. All no, right. Cool. No, I'll, no. I'll, I'll get you the numbers, and no. then we'll look like the fool. <laughs> I'm just saying. No I'm, way. I'm telling you. I'm. I, I'm telling you what I saw. And by the way, Spider Man as if, if we're ta- and Spider Man, I think is the most. Are you like, just saying words now? No, I'm. I'm Where's tell- the Spider Man? It is in terms of like brand things that are sold. Spider Man no. is like the highest selling character. Okay, maybe I, as as characters go, but he doesn't outsell other things. Well, you're only looking from a toy perspective. I'm talking about like no, I'm talking about from pop culture in general. I, I, I'm going to tell you the number one thing. It's the, it's Star not, Wars. No, it's not, it's all right. It's got to be. I'm telling you, a guy in Mexico cares more about Spider Man than Star Wars. Star Wars has got to be number one thing around the world. A guy in Mexico. <laughs> he's he's generalizing. I am. He, Mexicans don't like Star Wars. He's saying. No, that's not. I'm, I, I'm Andrew just, just said Mexicans don't like Star Wars. Said it all. Some of the best crazy Star Wars toy crap came out of Mexico. That is not what I said at so all. So we're gonna end this episode sure. with Andrew <laughs> pissed off. Uh, yes. Andrew doesn't think Mexican people like Star Wars. That's not what oh, I said. Sorry. Sorry, Mexican on, people. On Bill Bat. Can Bill Bat be like the final coda to this? I don't even know what that is. It's Bill. It's a Bilbo Batman guy. It's He's a little thing. I just. It, he's awesome. Here, let's get his little doorway. I'll tell you why Mexicans don't like Star Wars. Stop. What are you, crazy? Senior Ryan Johnson. 